So, I mean, looking from the perspective of, of some of these European firms, um, given that, I mean, there are projections that 25 to, I think, 30 percent even of global growth will take place in China the, the, the upcoming years. How should their short term sort of business departments balance their interests with obviously longer term strategic requirements of not falling prey to uh, China's efforts to replace them in these indigenization efforts. So what I hear among European business leaders here in Beijing uh, and other cities is that a year ago, uh, particularly because COVID was showing the kind of the fragility of some very important supply chains, there was a lot of conversation about the need to hedge and to diversify and the risks of being too dependent on the China market. Now, with China really as the only growth story for lots of important European companies, I'm told that that conversation about diversification has basically ended, at least for now. You don't hear people talking about that because this is the only place that people can see revenue growth. And so I think that, you know, it's not that everyone has forgotten uh, some of the lessons, the painful lessons that they learned last year. It's that, you know, companies are in some ways forced to be uh, short term kind of all the time and can afford to be long term in their thinking some of the time. But, you know, if they're not hitting their results right now, if they're not keeping their shareholders happy right now, then they're in immediate trouble. And in the kind of short term, this is where the action is. And, you know, in the medium term, this is where the growth is. Now, an interesting question is whether any part of that conversation from a year ago about the need to diversify does any part of that still survive? And I think if any part of that conversation does still have some salience, it's that there was a conversation 12 months ago about how there was a difference between investing in a brand new plant in China to make things for the China market. And that was even a year ago, a good idea and clearly is seen as even more of a good idea now. But then there was another question, which was, is China where you want to build the next state of the art plant to supply consumers in Europe or in the United States. And there, some of the concerns, not just about kind of dependence that we saw last year, some new concerns about, you know, whether you can be absolutely sure that there are no political risks associated with your China supply chain, perhaps if it runs through Xinjiang, uh, perhaps if you're using coal fired electricity in a plant in China that is going to really interfere with your global promises as a European company to have a zero uh, net zero carbon neutral global supply chain. Those conversations about being in China for China and then a separate conversation about whether China is the best place to manufacture for the rest of the world. I think some of those conversations uh, will endure.